Good evening. Welcome to the Tuesday, July 17th, regular meeting of the Town of Orange Planning Zoning Commission. Before we begin, I'd like to point out the locations of our emergency exits. The first one is to my right, your left, in the middle of the room where most of us come in and out of this building. Uh, the second two are again to my right, your left, in the hallway to the rear of the room. The first one immediately upon entering the hallway, and the third one at the end of the hallway. I'd like to ask those seated at the table to introduce themselves. Tamara Costello, Zoning Administrator Assistant. Rick Miagioni. Paul Kaplan. Ozzy Parenti. Paul Denise, Zoning Administrator and Enforcement Officer. I'm Commissioner Walter Clark and Commissioner Judy Smith Morgan was delayed and will be arriving shortly. The first item on tonight's agenda is the update on Marshall Road, Edison Road development study. This was the letter that Paul and uh, Paul Grimmer had drafted to send out the RFP. We all had copies of that emailed to us. Uh, we were asked to make comments. I know I made a couple suggestions. Paul Grimmer made a couple suggestions. Those have been incorporated in Paul's letter, which he's going to review with Mr. Grimmer tomorrow or later this week. Later this week. Uh, at this time, do any of the other commissioners have any further comments or suggestions on this letter? The other uh, comment that I have is that we'll be sending that out to consulting firms. Paul has a list. Uh, I'm compiling a list. If there's any firm you want you want that sent to as well, let me know and we'll, we'll include them. Okay. Do we need a motion to accept that letter or just... Okay. All set. The second item on tonight's agenda is a site plan application submitted by property owner Ken Ginsburg for property known as 307 Racebrook Road, formerly the Recreation Showroom. The proposal is to modify an existing 9,087 square foot retail building to a 6,250 square foot medical professional building, medical professional office building. And it includes an architectural standard supplement. Good evening. Uh, my name is uh, Rick Raymond and I'm a project manager with Anthony Giordano's in West Haven. And today we're looking for a site plan approval for 307 Racebrook Road, it's a C2 commercial site, an existing 22,802 square foot lot. Uh, a lot of the members might know it's the existing old showroom. Um, the existing building is 9,087 square feet and it was retail. We're proposing to renovate the building, cutting off a front portion of it to make it to 6,250 square feet. Um, into medical slash professional offices. Um, we meet the parking requirements and uh, there, it is a pre-existing building so it does predate, predate some of the site setbacks. Um, I've had meetings with uh, State of Connecticut DOT in regards to curb cuts and drainage and that reflects in this plan here. Um, I've talked with the fire marshal today and um, he recommended that we put a four foot fire lane with some signage up the north side of the building is there space for that yes okay yeah it's just it's a driveway anyway um, there's no parking there anyway okay um, I'm still waiting for some feedback from the police department I haven't heard anything back from them yet um, I believe I talked to a mr. D D uh, Denise today and he said we had some sign offs from wetlands and possibly engineering they, the, the plan was referred over to them. I, th I think they still didn't sign off yet. Okay. They, they hadn't been returned to my office later today. So um, th there's still a few sign offs that we have to get. Probably the most critical is the state state to, to comment in writing. And yeah, I, I believe the guy I've been dealing with is on vacation. Um, he hasn't returned my call. You mentioned the uh, DOT curb cuts have been reviewed. Have they been reviewed and approved, or they've just been submitted to DOT? No, I had a meeting uh, about two weeks ago. Um, I had a design out in the front here, and I met with Ernie LaJoy uh, and then the drainage guy, Neil Cream, and we revised some of these entrances. I had them at 16 feet. They wanted them at 18 feet. Um, we made this island a lot smaller so a box truck can come in a lot easier. Um, Do we have a letter of approval from DOT? I, I'm waiting to get that. Okay. Please continue. Yep. Uh, the existing uh, landscape and there's uh, numerous large trees up the north side of the building um, which are all going to remain in, in the rear of the building on the south side on the building itself it's a lot of shrubbery that's been overgrown over the years that it's, that's going to have to be trimmed 
and some of it taken down so we can clean up the building and, and repaint it. Mm -hmm. um, There's some architectural here. But for our new front facade, we're proposing a three foot uh, stone veneer at the bottom level. Um, six nice large windows, new front door, a nice, uh, it's an existing uh, 11 foot high building in the front and 15 feet in the back, which is going to remain our rooftop units will all be placed up on there. Where are the youth, are the youth, youth <laughs> rooftop units going to be placed where they'll be hidden by the facade? Yes. Can you yeah. show us where they where they'll be located? Well, they're going to be behind. Okay, behind, behind this part here okay. because the other half actually has a a shed roof. Okay. Um, so it's a flat roof, then it comes up. But they will be hidden from both sides. Yes. Yes. Um, posing a tan slash earth tone color to the building with some uh, some brown trim. Um, seems to be very in harmony with other structures that are being built along Route 1 there. Paul, I know that because this uh, proposal, the lot size is less than 25,000 square feet, they don't have to submit a formal lighting plan, but the lights do still have to comply with our regulations, That's correct? Right. Have you looked at the lights, or would that be? Um, yeah, it was a while ago. Uh, the lighting plan. Yeah. Do you recall any? I remember reviewing it with the applicant and stating that they had to be shielded. And, but yes, uh, yeah, they are shielded. Uh, there's so many types of lights out there. This is one particular light. You don't need much lightage um, or foot candles on this particular site. We're proposing, there's, there are two utility poles out here. Mm -hmm. We're hoping to util utilize that as a night light so we don't show foot, throw foot candles out into the street. Yeah, I was going to say that would still have to comply with the half foot candle at the... That's, are you talking about a light the, the light the night program? Yeah, I don't know. Um, yeah, I think I think we've we've kind of steered away from that. Okay. And, and, <laughs> and would rather and would rather see a cutoff cutoff fixture. Um, well, the way these positions are now, I can get more um, more more wattage and, th and throw it out towards the property line more, and I still won't exceed my half a foot candle. But that can be reviewed. Yes. Yeah. Okay. J just one further thing. It's my understanding that the, um, the fire marshal also uh, talked about an interconnection with the adjacent bank. Yes. He uh, he had mentioned that, and um, my client, Mr. Ginsburg, had mentioned that a while ago. And I believe there's some parking spots over here, and, and maybe Ken could uh, comment on that. The bank does not want to lose two spots. I think, I think um, Ken I, I've got a call into the bank today. I called um, Steve Carbonaro, the the manager. So I can give you the name Paul, of uh, Susan Curtis. Uh -huh. I can give you her phone number tonight. Uh, Susan Curtis is the person that's responsible. Susan Curtis is the person responsible for um, making these kinds of decisions. I spoke with her, and um, she said it was out of the question. Um, okay. They have two or three parking spaces that they would lose. And there would be, there's somewhat of a grade change there uh, that would have to be transitioned in. And they were concerned about, um, they've, they've got a tight enough spot as it is. Um, and uh, they were concerned about losing the two or three parking spaces and then changing the traffic pattern and as well as losing the space. I, I, I was out there today. I didn't, I didn't think it was that difficult, but. I didn't either. I didn't think it was I that way. The, the thing that, they, that I, I will inform them is that the ultimate decision for the interconnection rests with the commission. And if it occurs now, you're going to do it within the, the scope of your, your site work. If the bank comes in at a later date, they will make the interconnection at their cost. I, I told Susan exactly that and told her what the, um, you know, what the policy of the commission was and said, look, if we do it now, it's my dime. If the commission makes it contingent upon or conditioned upon, whenever you go back for whatever it is that you want to do later on, you're going to have to do it, and it's going to be your dime. I'm surprised. Well, I, mean, I think you'd both benefit from it. Well, I guess the yeah. question would be, are you willing to put a, an easement on the deed that would allow that interconnection, and then we can deal with the bank on a, yeah. at a separate time if they're not willing to? Hopefully they'll, 
you know, see the light. And, well, I'm uh, also going to talk to him in the interim, yeah, so yeah, it looks like we're going to have another meeting to deal yes, with that. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. I, I, and I, Paul and I discussed this when I first, uh, okay. you know, brought this subject up to Paul, and uh, we talked about the interconnection. I don't have any problem with it at all. I think okay. it would be a great idea, but and, and I have no problem with an easement. Okay. Uh, but the bank was um, uh, deadly opposed to it. I, I stopped and I met with Mr. Carbonara. He referred me then to somebody else who then referred me to Susan, and I'll give you her number okay, before we really. leave. Because the fire marshal called me today regarding this interconnection. He would very much like to see it go forward, and he feels it would allow them to um, service Webster as well. It would be a benefit to Webster as well sure. as your property th to use the access. No question about it. It definitely benefits everybody, but um, you know, can't make them do it. It's not something that they wanted to do. Please continue. Um, is there any more other questions? Well, I had a question about the height of the stone that's going to be in the face of the building. You said it was three feet. Yes. Um, you know, typically that's in a, in a building of that height, that would be sufficient. But there are proposing to put a rather large facade on this building, and it somewhat diminishes the appearance of the, uh, the desired architectural use, which is the stone, brick, uh, or wood. It leaves a large area that's going to be uh, drive it. Correct. That is drive it, correct? It's not called drive it, yes. Yeah. Um, and I'd like to see a little bit more of the preferred material. Is I don't know how the commission feels about it, uh, but perhaps they could raise it up to the to the height of the windows, or you know, which are, uh, appears to be about four feet. Would that, would that be yeah, it'd be about another foot, four and a half. I don't know how, if the I, commission I, feels the same way or not. I'm not sure. I think we put it in, I put it in uh, for a different reason than the commission probably did. And um, it was more for, you know, people standing up against the building, putting their foot up against um, the stone uh, wouldn't affect, uh, as opposed to putting their foot up against the stucco and putting their foot through it or, you know, <laughs> damaging it or whatever. So for, from my standpoint, it was more of a, a functional and, and maintenance kind of a thing. If you wanted to bring it up another foot yeah. uh, to just underside the window, that's... Does the commission feel the same way, or, is there, or am I alone in that feeling? I mean, I don't feel strongly one way or the other on okay. it. Does anybody else have an opinion on that issue? I think it'll last longer if you go up to the bottom of the window, just for the reason he said people are leaning against it. But drive it, you know, it's just styrofoam with a little bit of yeah. cement on it. Yeah. So it's not a big deal, so you're only going up another foot. And you feel that that would protect the, the rest of the building and, uh, and keep it in better appearance. Yeah, because they're going to be leaning. They also go lean against the windows too. You know. Yeah, yeah we have no we well, have no problems with that. Anything, it's, right, uh, right. To, yeah. Um, we we dropped it down a little bit just because when you're transitioning the windows. Please use the microphone. I'm sorry. sorry. When you're transitioning the windows against the stone directly, there's uh, a little bit more of um, there's a little bit more of a, uh, a lip. A lip. Yeah. So uh, we transitioned it one step and then another step. That's, but again, it doesn't matter from, if that's okay. what the commission would like to see, we're happy to comply. I know I spoke <coughs> with Paul about it. There's a number of things in this plan that don't comply with the existing regulations. Uh, and I spoke with Paul about them because they are grandfathered. It is an existing building. I question about the green strip that we require in the front. Uh, there is going to be a small grass area in the front. Is that correct in the corner? Yes. Um, and there was an existing, I guess when the state came through there a few years ago, they took down the freestanding sign that was out there. Mm -hmm. uh, the site plan shows we were proposing to replace that in our green, green area out front. And basically what it comes down to is we're making a non-conforming use less non-conforming. So it's, it's an improvement. And that has to do with the side setbacks and several other areas of this, of this building. Yeah, we're proposing to replace the existing freestanding sign that was somewhere in here. I'm not too familiar exactly where it was. Um, we took all the information out of planning and zoning. That was there was a variance granted years ago. Separate sign application, or where they have to come? Yeah, probably separate, separate, separate sign application. Okay. Do any other commissioners have any uh, questions or comments on this application? Is there a reason why you selected stone over, say, brick for your facade? I just, I'm thinking, you know, with Webster so close, and that's entirely brick, I just didn't know if that might have more, you know, aesthetic appeal. They're so close to two buildings. No, we, 
There was no magic to it at all. Yeah, I'm a fan <laughs> of stone myself. I don't it could be brick, it could be stone, and I could walk into the... If, if I'm not mandated to do the stone, it may be that I walk in and they've got a nice color brick or a nice brick, and we may end up changing it if, that, if we're allowed to do that. And not the most You see more brick uh, within the cities? I mean, this is a nice kind of a... No, but if they change the spot they right now, approval, or you can do I it. Think I'm well, unless you no, you can do it though administratively, correct? Well, I would, I would inform. I yeah, I would talk to the board first about right. that. So. Okay. Um, we do have to keep this public hearing open. We need to get the letter from DOT, from the state DOT on this. Yep. A couple of the formal sign-offs. A couple of the sign-offs. Uh, so at this point, if there's no questions from the audience. At this point, we'd like to have a motion to continue this public hearing. Uh, this isn't a public hearing, I guess, so we don't have to don't have to go that step. Could I mention one thing? I know <laughs> in the past when I worked with um, DOT, he, he sends me approvals and emails. He says he's very short staffed there, and sometimes he doesn't have time to do letters, so it's an email. That, that's fine. I can okay. follow it up with a phone conversation. Yeah, okay. Okay. All right, thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Have a nice night. Thank you, and you too. Uh, the next meeting that you're going to be on is August 7th. Okay. Okay. The next item on tonight's agenda is a Section 824 refer referral for municipal improvements. This is to the old Tavern Road Recreation Area. Would the applicant like to come forward? How are you, Jeff? Good evening. My name is Jeff Gordon. I'm president of Codus Brody and Associates. I'm doing business at 504 Boston Post Road here in the town of Orange. Um, here on behalf of the uh, Orange Department of Parks and Recreation, and we're looking at uh, certain improvements uh, to the parking situation at the old tavern field. This is an overall picture of uh, the 32 and a half acres that comprises the field and also the police department building, the highway department building, the sand storage building, the uh, new facility and fenced in area from the police department, garage. All this parcel was part of a subdivision once upon a time. It was also a, s a sand and gravel pit. Uh, there was a road right away that came through like so intersecting Tallman Road that came in as well and was set up for some building lots but it became developed as a park in a rather piecemeal fashion with fields being added here there throughout the years and uh, as such it also developed a loop driving uh, driveway around with some in indistinct parking areas some have been made a little bit more uh, more distinguished as time has gone on we have a gravel area um, over here on the eastern portion, but what's tended to be a, a problem through the years is that it's coming to be a bit of a free-for-all out there, and a tremendous amount of parking on the lawn area around the uh, Little League and the Tot area, and it's been feared that it's only a matter of time between some child wandering out between the cars and people looping through there. Uh, usually a family comes to watch one kid play and there's a couple more in tow and they do get separated, so it's been a concern as to how the parking can be segregated from the pedestrian areas and create an element of, uh, uh, of greater safety. The first phase of our, of our uh, proposal was to eliminate the loop road. Uh, as you can see how the loop road continues around, we are going to cut it off at this point here, right now there was an old basketball court. It's kind of a gravel lot around the concession stand. Uh, we would allow this loop road to just kind of end right at that point here. We can see this. We're not going to change any of that in this phase. Future phases, we're looking to clean that up a bit. But uh, with some funding that's available now, they're looking to get the primary parking area installed, which is adjacent to the police department property. 
Uh, we have uh, retained buffer area behind some of the residents over here. And we are looking to saw cut and remove part of that road to create a six foot wide asphalt meandering walkway, inline skating, whatever you would have it, but not a vehicle space there. And we have some light poles that are still remaining. We tried to work the meander around with that. And then we're just going to terminate it here. At this point, uh, future plans would have a, a more defined parking area developed over here with perhaps a tots play area, maybe a structure in that center area which could be fenced in and secured and, and give the parents a little more sense of well-being uh, with their children. Uh, this is the area where we define to have a, a greater uh, increase of parking. Uh, we're looking, um, I think right now we're showing about 106 parking spaces there now. We went from 150, we had a large area back in here, but concerns for the neighbors, concerns about getting too close to the police department property made us uh, have, and also probably lack of funds, made us tone down uh, the proposal at that point. So we're looking at uh, a, a new uh, asphalted area there. Uh, Je uh, excuse me, Jeff. The you're saying that the uh, present parking, if you had a guess, um, how much would it hold right now? It's hard to say because people park on the lawn areas. They park everywhere. Um, this was an area that, uh, you know, our, my charge was to try to do the best that we can with it uh, and to try to get it more organized. And usually if it's more organized, it's more predictable. You know, maybe one day they have 150 cars there, and in the same area, maybe another day they have 80 cars there, depending on how people park but we're trying to get something more predictable here. There remains to be parking in this area as well. Uh, you probably can you know, fit another 60, 70 cars loosely in that area. But those won't be accessible anymore. No, no this, they will be. This is new paving here. This yeah. continues on. Oh, OK. That, that continues on. Um, so it just says saw cut line limit of new asphalt paving is this area here. Some of these areas have curbs. Some of them are not with curbs, but with wheel stops. Uh, we have an area over here where we have our stormwater management. We're also, we're not proposing any lighting for this parking lot at this time, but we're uh, showing, putting in some Schedule 40 PVC pipe under the new paving roads crossing. Um, right here you have uh, you have uh, light poles along there. We have a light pole here. We have a conduit here, here, and here. So if at some future date there's a desire to light that parking lot, they don't have to tear up the parking lot. They can pull wire through that conduit, which will be buried and capped underground. Uh, we have uh, stormwater infiltrators and a little mini basin here with some plantings in there um, for water quality control and uh, also, we've widened the area out. We have to excavate deeper because the area has some areas of compaction, but there is gravel down as we go. Uh, we have to uh, verify with um, some, some more deep test pits to know exactly where we're going to maneuver those units. But we've created an oversized island here, which creates it as a little basin, but it also has the units down below. And the overflows tie into the existing drainage and go back out. Uh, going through wetlands, they asked us to add some supplementary units up on the upper parking levels. So we put some uh, catch basins with infiltrators up there as well uh, to try to, uh, to, to manage some of that. So just to give you a little idea of the existing tree lines in this area, uh, the, the tree line here comes down obviously to about here now so we're going to be removing that much of the foliage but you see that there's some good foliage that still remains for the neighbors um, and we think that you know adding the green back over here and there's a small little uh, monument area over here uh, the parks department said that they'll be able to relocate some of those features within this island and also remaining behind the uh, the backstop there but we feel a little bit of a turnabout here to drop some people off. They can walk down through here. It'll be an interesting learning curve. People who are used to parking right next to the chain link fence at the ball field are going to have to be walking. But uh, it's been felt by 
uh, Department of Oversight that it's a small pi price to pay to avoid any kind of future problems with children? I think overall it's a vast improvement not only from an aesthetic point of view but also from a safety point of view. I, I agree with Jeff's assessment that uh, you know, with the loop design and the kids running around all over there, it's, it's an accident waiting to happen in its current form. Quick question. What prevents anybody, because you said it's going to be a six-foot walkway. People are used to driving there. Is there going to be like bollards or something to keep them? We're, we're planning on putting some bollards in there. You know there. what I'm saying? Because everyone's so used to going that way. Right. Yeah, we're, we're probably looking at just some uh, wood posts. And at this area here, we might be limiting that to some uh, just some, some uh, large uh, Jersey barriers at, as yeah, a transition. I think, uh, uh, both Scott Allen and Ed reviewed viewed this today, and uh, I think you've got a, com a comment in writing from Scott. Mm -hmm. um, but, but one of the suggestions that Ed made that seemed to make sense is that, that something should be present at the end of that vehicle access drive and pedestrian drive to separate the two, right. uh, so two functions. Right, so we're looking for like a Jersey barrier there because in the future, there's plans to enhance that area, but this was the primary thing was to to cut this off now, so there wouldn't be a problem. Are there any other questions or comments from the commission? Are there any questions or comments from the public? There being none, is anybody prepared to make a motion? Yeah, I'll move that we approve the uh, municipal improvements on the old tavern road recreation area as proposed by the town of Orange. Now, now is approve the right or we want to send a favorable recommendation? Or I'll yeah. say you can say approve okay. and recommend. Okay. Approved and recommend. Okay. <laughs> we have a motion. Anybody get a second it? I'll second the motion. Motion has been seconded. Any further discussion? There being none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Pass it unanimously. Thank you very much. Thank you. The next item on tonight's agenda is a review of the minutes from the June 19, 2007 meeting. The only comment I had was on page two of the minutes, the very last sentence. It reads uh, about the adult active community. The application reads active adult community. It's, as I said, a very minor change. It's in the very last sentence, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> now, it very well might have been said the other way around, but the, I know the application reads uh, active adult. So. Are there any other questions or comments or suggestions? There being none, is anybody prepared to make a motion? I'll move that we accept the minutes, subject to the one change you, you mentioned. We have a, uh, a motion. Second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Approved. Thank you very much. The next item on the agenda is old business. I have nothing to bring up under old business. Does anybody in the commission? <laughs> we'll move on to new business then. <laughs> Does anybody have anything to bring up under new business? <laughs> we'll move on to the report of the zoning enforcement officer. We've been busy in the office as well, especially with these applications, but there's also some enforcement activities going on, and we're trying to work on the post road. Um, uh, last week, with the help of Fred Trotta um, and the uh, Public Works Department, we actually physically removed signs that we uh, deemed under the building code to be safety hazards. Um, there's also a few more uh, abatement orders going out on that. Um, one of the biggest things that, that happened in the last two weeks is I got a new computer in my office. And uh, my old computer was, I think it was the oldest one in Town Hall, and I, I think I had Windows 98. That would have, would have been the latest version, but did not allow me to take attachments on my email. And believe me, nowadays, everyone is doing business uh, by email. Uh, you know, like very, very few faxes anymore, or very few approval letters sent in the mail. But, um, you know, my dealings with uh, Coastal Area Management and... Uh, uh, the state agencies, everything is done via email, and I'm able to get attachments now. I got I got a card reader today, which is going to make enforcement activities better. Normally, um, I would take pictures with a 35 millimeter camera, have to go down to the store, drop them off, go back later in the day, hopefully, or the next day, uh, and it's extremely helpful to send out an abatement order with a picture of the violation, 
or I was using my own personal camera, going home at night, putting them on a disc, coming back, loading them back onto the computer and printing them off, uh, or printing them at home. So um, it's making life a lot easier, and, and we hope to streamline a few things w with that. Um, as far as some of the inspections that are made, um, there's been great progress on the buildings at Springbrook Commons. I don't know if you've seen them. Um, uh, pretty much the elevations are almost there, but uh, there, there's still some site work that has to be accomplished um, at that point. Um, and then that's probably the uh, uh, the area of the uh, of mo where most of my inspections have centered with regard to new constructions. Apart from that, things pretty much buttoned up. Baron Grill is it looks like a be finished this year. <laughs> he's he's claiming he's going to be open by August 30th. So the, there is still some facade work that has to be done. That's the only thing that's that's the only thing that's really outstanding. I was uh, you know I've been inside. The work is pretty much done there on the restaurant portion. So, uh, uh, you know, that's, that's what I'm informed, so. Uh. Paul, I notice we have these two orders of uh, notices of violation for the tables and chairs. Yes. Have they been removed, you know? Have you been uh, to reinspect? I, the, my last uh, time out there was on, uh, uh, was on Friday, and they hadn't been on Friday. I okay. had not been back out there yet. Yeah. I'm particularly concerned with the rolly book. Concerned with both, obviously, right. you know, but the Roly Poly one, we already have a parking. I did. I did there the owner, well. the owner, did come to my office, and they, they did say they were going to remove. Them. Okay, good. Thank you very much. Uh, is there any other questions for Paul? And Paul, I noticed um, some used cars for sale again on that that Indian River Road area behind. Okay. That bank. You know what happens? I think I, I usually want them, and they take them in for a while, and then they come back out. There are only two, but they're still there. There being no other questions or comments for Paul, we'll take a brief reset, recess until our public hearings begin at 8 o'clock. Good evening. Welcome back to the July 17th meeting. We're about to begin the public hearing portion of our meeting. There are several new people in the audience, so I'd like to point out again the locations of our, of our emergency exits. They are the main entrance and exit to my right, your left. There are two more emergency exits, both of them in the hall to the rear of the building, uh, one immediately upon entering the hall and one at the end of the hall. Uh, I'd like to ask Commissioner Ozzie Parenti to read the legal notice. Okay, uh, notice is hereby given that on Tuesday, July 17, 2007, at 8 p.m., at the Orange Town Hall, 617 Orange Center Road, the Orange Town Planning and Zoning Commission will conduct public hearings on the following. Special permit application for the conversion of a single-family dwelling submitted by Robert J. and Mamie D. Romano for property known as 196 Orchard Road. The proposal is to construct an addition to an existing single-family dwelling to create a 900-foot apartment to accommodate the elderly. Petition to amend the orange zoning regulations to amend section 383-27 special uses in the residential RES district and add section 383-143.3 special standards for active adult community age restricted housing submitted by Sunrise Hill Estates LLC special permit application submitted by Sunrise Hill Estates LLC for property known on assessors map 96-3- lot 1 1 a through U, also known as the corner of Route 34 and Grassy Hill Road, bounded by Skyview Terrace. Total acres 36.80. The proposal is to construct an active adult community, age restricted housing. A total of 142 units are proposed with a community building and associated tennis court and parking. A site application has also been submitted. Application for temporary special use earth materials removal and filling submitted by property owner Sunrise Hill Estates LLC for property known on uh, Assessor's Map 96-3 Lot 1, 1C through U, also known as the corner of Route 34 and Grassy Hill Road. The proposal is to export 120,000 cubic yards of material in conjunction with the above referenced active adult community proposed by Sunrise Hill Estates. Redistribution of soils, 200,000 cubic yard cut and 80,000 cubic yard fill. An application for certification of soil erosion and sediment control has also been submitted. 
Resubdivision application submitted by Anderson Wilcox Corporation for property owner Sunrise Hill Estates, LLC. The property is located at the corner of Route 34 and Grassy Hill Road, also known as Assessor's Map 96-3, Lot 1, 1A through 1U, for the consolidation of 21 existing lots to 7 lots with one out parcel. This proposal also includes the, the abandonment of Sunrise Hill Drive, Deerfield Lane, and Goose Lane. A copy of this notice has been filed with the Orange Town Clerk, dated in Orange, Connecticut, this 27th day of June, 2007. Thank you very much. Before we begin uh, the public hearings, I'd like to announce, too, that we are going to adjourn tonight's meeting at 10.30 uh, and continue it at our next scheduled meeting. The next item on tonight's agenda is an application for temporary special earth materials removal and filling submitted by property owner Peter Leszczak for property known as 522 Wheelers Farms Road. This is a continuation of the public hearing uh, from our last meeting. Would the applicant like to come forward? Good evening, everyone. Um, I just, uh, maybe I should remind what, what's happening from next meeting. We're proposing a free split. A free split actually already has been filed. A uh, single family house, simple driveway, septic system, detention for roof layers, detention for driveway, uh, basic grading to accommodate driveway and support building. Full name. My name is Rima Lokaitis. I'm from Martinez Couch and Associates in Wallingford, Connecticut. Just to remind the commissioners, when we first heard this, we had a lot of concern about the way the frontage was calculated. Uh, if I'm correct, and please correct me if I'm not, but this 100 feet of road is accepted town road, correct? That's correct. Okay. Sir, your name? Peter, Peter Leschek of 20 Pine Tree Hill Road in Shelton, Connecticut. It's shown in somewhat a different fashion than I would have envisioned it on the supplement that we have here. But the point is that if the applicant chose to extend this road, which he has the legal right to do, and create a cul-de-sac at the end, he then would have 150 feet of frontage in the fashion that we have traditionally acknowledged frontage being established. Uh, that was a big concern. I, I know of, I think all the commissioners had that concern that we had initially it was presented to us that the frontage was calculated on two roads, and that was something that I think we all felt was unacceptable. Uh, they have, as I said, brought it to our attention that they can get the, uh, rec the needed 150 feet of frontage in one continuous line on one end. Uh, so that, I think, ends those concerns that we had. So the, the rest of it is the, uh, the issues that we had before. That We do have a memo from Scott Allen, uh, and I'll read this. The Wetlands Commission has reviewed the site plans for this proposal and has determined that if the project goes forward, an administrative application will be required. The administrative application will be predicated on the revised site plans dated April 23, 2007, as prepared by Martinez, Cooch, and Associates. A review by this office of the revised site plan indicates the applicant appears to have addressed the stormwater management issues. There was also an uh, a question by one of the uh, adjoining property owners regarding that as well. Um, at this point, I'd like to ask any of the commissioners if they have any, have any further questions of the applicant. Um, of the applicant. No, I'm, I'm good. Okay. Is there anybody from the audience who'd like to uh, address this issue? Please come forward, sir. Hi, my name is Bill Newland. I live at 517 Wilcott Lane Orange. I'm the abutting but property owner. Um, I think I have a question before I'm going to go any further. They're saying this is a town approved <coughs> road. Back in 1993, I think it was, the town approved Wilcott Lane to the end of the cul-de-sac. Nothing beyond that was approved as a, 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 as a town approved road. So in my opinion anyway, this property belongs to the subdivision. It doesn't really even belong to the town. Um, because it's only town approved to that point. The um, property that from Wheelers Farm Road all the way across, this, this was never part of that. This property that we're talking about that's probably 40 feet wide and 
maybe a hundred feet long. Could, it's could you point to the property that you're the piece of property that you're referring to? Um, There's the end of Wolcott Lane to the lower left. This the end of Wolcott Lane? No, uh, lower left. Lower. Where am I? Oh, okay. I'm sorry. What's your question? Well, you're referring to a piece of property, and what we were referring to was this. This is a temporary cul de sac, or, de or defined as one, or described as one. This 100 feet of road from here to here is my understanding is accepted. Is that, am I using correct terminology there, Paul? That's what I was informed of, yes. Okay. Well, I got something that was written. It says, this is to confirm the fact that a road known as Wilcott Lane in Orange, the town of Orange, Connecticut, as shown on map number 710 entitled Westwood, owned by Pima Realty Scale 1 to 100, whatever, September 15, 1967, running northerly from Herbert Street to a turnaround distance of approximately 1,800 feet, is hereby accepted as a town road by the town of Orange. It's accepted as a town road to the turnaround. Nothing beyond that point has been accepted. Sir, what are you reading from? Oh, I'm reading from the Servant. Certificate of Road Acceptance uh, was recorded on October 19, 1973, um, in Ralphie Cal. Capital Salatro is the first selectman. When you say recorded, is that it? I just want to make sure I understand what you're reading from. Is that town minutes from a from a board of selecting meeting? It says corrected. I can show it to you. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Paul, uh, what what I what I was presented with is uh, a, a document that was recorded on the land records in volume two uh, two forty five at page five forty eight, and that's what uh, uh, the applicant the uh, uh, Mr. Newland was uh, reciting. I think the question is that we don't have the measurement of the 1,800 feet, though. We have it. We have an existing cul-de-sac that's described as a temporary cul-de-sac, correct? I, I think that's more of a question for the, for the town attorney. They, it came to light that 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 100 feet was still part of a town-approved road. In my discussions with him, yeah, it was, was viewed. It was viewed as a town-approved road. Now that may have nothing to do with that event that happened in 1973. And let me explain. There, there was a, a roadway that stretched uh, um, along through there that went all the way to Derby at one okay. point. Now, now what, what the historical ramifications of that are, I'm not quite sure. I don't know if that came into play with the town attorney's um, determination on that, but that, that would be a question to ask him. So I, th I think that at least from my standpoint, we should be um, looking for some kind of an opinion from Vinny as to what that's the status of that particular portion of the property I think he's I think he's addressed that but I think it would be uh, beneficial to us just to confirm it before we take any formal action on this uh, just to confirm I, I had several discussions with Vinny on this subject matter so I'm quite confident that it is the way it's the way it's proposed he, oh, I'm sorry. he said he said it was a town approved road that's my understanding, but I think it still be, would be a prudent approach for us to wait and get that confirmed because now it's a matter of question. What's the town approved road? The actual, the 100 feet beyond that, and uh, maybe Mr. Leschak could comment on that as well. I'd, yes, I can. But my understanding is that 100 additional feet was still accepted town road. I think, if, and correct me if I'm wrong, but even beyond that was accepted, and then there was some type of a transaction where a portion of that was deeded back to you and to an adjoining neighbor. That's correct. Is that correct? And they left that remaining 100 feet as an, a, an, an approved town road. And you're saying the extra 100 feet over and above north of where Wilkett Lane, at least the paved area, ends, and 100 feet north of that. That's correct. You know, and, and you know, to, to emphasize that point, I think, uh, and correct me, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but my guess is the reason they stopped that at 100 feet is because then Mr. Leschak would not have the required amount of frontage, and he would have to have been a fool to abandon the rest of the road and therefore abandon his lot. But I think we should confirm that. Correct. We we met with uh, with the town attorney and Paul, and w we presented some uh, the same exact documentation that Mr. Newland brought up, and that was his determination, and that's why they allowed us to split the property, and that's why be they granted us an easement, just to see, uh, because of the issue of snow removal. Technically, I could hold the town accountable for that small section of snow removal. We didn't want to run into that particular situation so on the easement the issue of that small section that I'll be driving over is my responsibility and a variety of other utilities and, and issues such as that so I think by the town attorney issuing the lot split that's on file by issuing the easement 
that's also on on town record of file I think that stands clear where the town attorney stands where does the easement run the easement the easement simply addresses the issue that I have and I have a right to pass and repass over this small section of, of road as is shown on my prints and see that that's why it has to be that's why he needs an easement there because that's not his property is actually coming on to what is an approved town road so so what what exactly are the mechanics of you know, how is it how is it going to happen that you know we're going to uh, resolve this issue regarding the frontage well, what, what needs to happen in order for that to occur well actually <laughs> it gets more complicated because that's really not the issue before us the issue before us is <coughs> the, uh, is the filling and removing a fill on this issue that's what the public hearing was brought about when this was presented to us I think every member of the Commission looked at it and said wait a minute you know where's your 150 feet of frontage and it was presented to us that it was 150 100 feet here and 50 feet there to which I think all of us have, and I don't mean to speak for everybody said you know wait a minute that's we've never done it that way and that's not how we interpret the regulations um, the applicant came back and demonstrated that if they built a cul-de-sac on the end of that 100 feet they would gain the required footage that they required linear footage that they needed to establish frontage that's what I'm asking about though. that and then that would be uh, what the uh, it really the called this act would be uh, would establish the frontage it actually really no, but would that to become a town have, yes it would become town property that's That'd correct. Be a, a road that's correct but he has an easement from the town to come across theirs in lieu of building the road out there it's kind of a would, would the new cul-de-sac actually get built I mean no it, oh it wouldn't it will not get built and he has an easement from the town because they went to the Board of Selectmen and said look you know instead of extending the road it's kind of a, a twisted way to do this this is not the the cleanest application to put it mildly uh, so, so how, how does he have how does he have 150 feet of frontage on a town approved road then because he he, he doesn't need he doesn't need to have the road there because he has the easement he needs to be able to demonstrate that he could have the frontage and he demonstrated that he has the frontage actually he does have actually that is town approved road he had no he knows it's not paid it's not built so there is that is a town approved road that 100 feet and obviously you'd have to put a cul-de-sac at the end of that and with the radius applied to that he would gain the required 150 feet but but that that cul-de-sac won't actually be built is that what you're saying? That's correct. So <laughs> it just seems to me like CBA is the appropriate form for that because we're, we are um, we're not requiring something to be built that would you know meet the regulation. So we're, we're waiving our own regulation. I'm not, I'm not sure. I, I don't think I'm waiving it. Let me maybe further explain what, what happened was um, when this issue with regard to the lot split came up, I approached the town attorney and said, I have a, I have a, a proposal for frontage um, uh, which where the minimum frontage is obtained uh, via frontage on two different streets is that acceptable and his ruling said was yes it did meet the regulations and then the, the map was filed so that's that's how that transpired um, Paul in in your opinion do our regulations uh, I mean I, I understand what you just said relative to the two I mean, I'm not in love with the interpretation either, although I'll, I'll, I'll obviously stand on what the town attorney says. But my question is, based on what um, the applicant has presented here, um, does that, the fact that he can uh, demonstrate that he's got, or he could have the frontage, is that sufficient under the regulations as they exist? <laughs> I, I guess that uh, let me Let me, let me preface my answer by saying the application that you have here has, has does not have anything to do with the lot split I understand the Commission's concern it was the same concern I had when I approached the town attorney uh, that being said <laughs> I, I know that I know that if we're going to have an activity that develops a lot you want to you want to make sure that it, it conforms to the regulations um, you, you know you may want to get the in input one more time from Vin Marino who was involved in this process to to discuss that with you. Well, what's before us? Uh, I, listen, I, what's, what's before us is the removal and fill issue. Is the only thing that's before us in this public hearing. Off an approved lot, as far as I'm concerned. Well, <laughs> it is. I on guess file. my question would be: Is if we were to go forward with this, let's just say to to, uh, to foster the argument, if they could not have 
created this 150 feet frontage on a town approved road. This was just say they didn't have the room for it, say it only went up 70 feet. This was already approved under the other plan, so where would the red flag come up, is my question, typically. I mean, it already went, but went through, you and Vinny Does went over this. Does this sign off on free splits? No, I sign off on this free split. And Paul conferred with the town attorney, who interpreted it, you know, 150 feet of frontage as, as strictly a legal opinion that there is 50 feet here, 100 feet here, there is 150 feet. You're utilizing two separate roads yes. that are separated by a thousand feet. The commission looked at it and said, "We've yes. never done that before." Well, it seems to me that, it, based on what occurred, anyhow, our discussion tonight is more like or one that's heading for maybe we should resolve this but at a later time in terms of cleaning up our regulations if we want to um, but that the fact of the matter is this was or this lot was already approved I don't know whatever they the split occurred w with discussions with town officials and at this point the only thing before us is the removal of the fill I, I think that's right I, I agree with you and I but I just I think it eases us I think I would be <coughs> determined to send us back to ZBA had it not been demonstrated that it could, me, that be, it could be done that but in but, my mind but, but that's already, not the issue in front of us he, and he already has an approval of this subdivision it's got to be a yes right yes he does <laughs> yes. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's a trick question I don't think you could go yes. by demonstrating that he could do 150 feet because then anyone could come in here and says, you know what, I could build a cul-de-sac, but I want to spend the money. Well, but no, 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 what I'm saying is that well, it's there is a difference. That road, the, the difference in this case is that that 100 feet beyond the existing cul-de-sac is considered a town-approved road. That's an approved road, even though it's not paved. That's that's oh, that's the rule. Only if they give their section of land to the town. No. 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 He doesn't own this section of land. That's why he had to get the easement. Maybe, maybe I can illustrate up there. He only got the easy on the, the straightaway, not the cul-de-sac. Right. The cul-de-sac, that's his land. Yeah, but it could also be done if you, it really could be centered because it's required. Prior, all this he road can. was not paved. Prior to its abandonment, it was considered a town-approved road. It was a highway that date, dated back to the 1800s. Right, but now there's only 100 feet right now of town road. From here. That's From it. From here, here. He, that's what's and what, what Mr. Lesniak uh, approached me and said, we have frontage, we have 100 feet here on a town approved road and 50 feet here. No, I know that, but where his cul-de-sac is, to make that, he has to give up some of his property. He, that's not town road right there. That's correct. He right, would have to give his. up some of his property right. to do that. So that's but what I'm saying. He would, you got to give up the property to make a 150 foot radius. But, or but if you want it on one street. If you want it on one street, right. But, but that's not going to happen. Well, I know it's going to happen. I'm saying in no, the no, future. No, no, it's not going to happen. No, I know it's not going to yeah. happen. What Rick is saying is in it's the future, someone else could come else in here. Come up and say, I don't want to spend this eighty thousand on a cul-de-sac because I got two sections of but road. I don't but, but we're not even. We're not. We're well, not there. That's all irrelevant. Right, it, right because I, it's already been done. It's well, done. It's been done, and the predicate for it was not that. Although it's a nice ac academic exercise, the predicate for it was the hundred feet to the left and the fifty feet on Wheeler's Farms. Right. If, if I understand what Paul. Said correct. That's the part we may want to address as a commission. Well, I think. Well, if the, if you think the regulation is unclear. Well, I think if we're I think if we're if we're clear to all of us. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was clear to all of us, and apparently Vinny had a different opinion on it. You know, I think Vinny looked at it from a lawyer's point of view, and this is what the regulation says, and he read it and uh, you know took it figuratively and. And you know, that's what it says. And, and uh, I, be I believe they looked back at some corner lot issues, and granted, it wasn't a thousand feet away, but there's been some corner lots that have added up measurements and things like that. Well, I had asked Paul at uh, last I think meeting. what you're referring to is that there have been times where frontage was obtained from two different streets. Uh, and you could extrapolate lot. that for this. Well, I think that's that's what occurred. But you know, you could argue that that was contiguous, and this is not. But. And we have to clean up that language, maybe at most, is the contiguous nature of the streets. But yeah. all right. You, so. you don't know what else Vinny may have run across when he was studying the question. He may have, you know, he, there may have been another, you know, Connecticut case decided that, you know, interpreted well, a statute, you know, regulation like ours to. Well, I know that he 
in speaking with him, I'm comfortable saying that he took a literal literal interpretation of our regulation. It says 150 feet of frontage on a town approved road. There is 150 feet of frontage on these roads. It's just a no, way but, it's, but it says road, road. It's singular. I, I, I think attorneys usually will take a very conservative interpretation on that and that they try to... I'm sorry. I, I, I would believe most attorneys, including uh, me, would get, take a very conservative approach on, in, on interpretation where there's a gray area and where there's a gray area, there's usually the tie goes to the property owner. So I'm not, I'm just sort of new on this one, and I'm not even sure I understand it. But uh, <laughs> if, if there needs to be clarification on the part of the regulations, then you ought to make it. But I'm, I'm not surprised at that sort of interpretation. The other thing, too, is um, Mr. Lesiak did have frontage beyond that 100 feet. And based upon his discussions with the town and, and adjacent abandoned neighbors, that further part of abandoned that area um, that that lot fronted on. Um, that was that was to eliminate concerns from some of the neighbors that that road might ultimately go through. Mm -hmm. and, and there were in fact plans at, at one point to do that, but and, and as I said, this this has a as we're learning has somewhat of a long history, and clearly Mr. Lesjak would not have abandoned this portion of it and in fact given up his lot had he been not given this interpretation that this would suffice. Uh, I'm sure that's the reason why this was abandoned up to 100 feet and 50 feet on the other road. Which um, is why he's jumping out of his skin over there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is that obvious? I don't know if you want a, a statement, a written thing from Vin or have him to attend the next meeting or... Well, uh, I guess I feel like we have enough evidence based on the, you know, the what we've heard so far from Paul, from you, and also from Bo's conversation with Vin, uh, and the fact that the lot was already split. Yeah. I think that's the biggest factor. I here. think it's done. You know, I mean, I don't really think that's an open issue anymore. Okay. The horse is out of the barn and eating at home already. You know. Well, then the issue before us is the fill issue, the removal and fill. I have no issues with that proposal, outstanding issues with that proposal. Do any other commissioners have any questions or comments Please. on that uh, issue alone? Just want to know if Mr. Newland was done with uh, what do you have to say now? Well, Mr. Newland, we still have time to, you know, to address things. But I just want to know if the commission has any other questions about the removal and fill that's here. And we do also have the comment from Scott Allen, which would have to be incorporated into any motion. Uh, Mr. Newland, would you like to address the commission again? Have you read this <coughs> from Mr. Allen? I'm not from, I heard it read. Okay, okay. I still have a concern. I brought up a question a couple of weeks ago that the um, Board of Selectmen approved the easement so he could get into his property and that the one year that they gave for that easement expired prior to even coming to the um, before we had the public hearing a couple weeks ago so that one year it expired it was only a one-year term when that when they had their hearing and I think I brought that up or when it was brought to the Board of Selectmen there was uh, two people that were really notified of it and that was um, his other neighbor I was never notified that they that there was an agreement that was reached between them depending on um, the location of where the driveway was coming off the cul-de-sac and where the telephone pole was going to go and so on and so forth. So I went there two weeks later and I had to put it back on the agenda to, you know, to voice my concerns. At that point in time, um, originally one of the selectmen or two of them said that don't worry about it because it has to come back to them. And then later on in that meeting, it was brought up that, oh, no, it doesn't have to go back to the Board of Selectmen. Then I was told not to be concerned about it because I would have my voice or my say when it comes up for development. But the way it was, I um, hate to use the word backdoored, but the way it was done, I really had nothing to say because it, it so happens that everything's done. The only thing that I could probably do legally is get an attorney and put an injunction to stop the whole thing. And I don't believe that's my responsibility or should be my cost when it's up to the town to make sure that they enforce their own regulations. Uh, 
Do you either Paul or Mr. Leszczak have any comment on the fact that Mr. Nolo is saying that the easement has expired? I can't really comment on that because that, that was an easement that the Board of Selectmen granted to Mr. Leszczak, and it's my understanding that's been filed. And that was that was pretty. That was filed very recently in, in the uh, in the uh, town clerk's office. Is that correct? That's correct. We were not a part. Our office or yeah. our commission was not a party to that easement. M Mr. Mr. Lesn uh, what's your first name again? Oh, Bill. Bill, uh, was the easement that you're talking about was that one that had to be filed within a year, or did it have a term of one year? They said it had a term of one year. Typically, an easement by definition is a permanent right to use. Correct. So it'd be very, it'd be very different for that to have happened. Typically, when you get an approval, they give you one year to record it. And that's well, I thought it was one year to take advantage of it, not one year to record it. I'd have to see the document, but the approval. But I, I'm fairly comfortable. Uh, and if Mr. Lesniak come in and discuss that, it that really wouldn't right. make much sense to have a, a one year easement. And uh, I think the way I understood it was just for the approval. So if they, they had all the approvals and everything was done within one year, then they were okay. But conceivably, you could drag it on a lot longer than that. And I still believe this board, I, I don't have an issue, and I guess the board doesn't either, with uh, the removal of the dirt and the pushing of the dirt or whatever he wants to do, because I'm not convinced that's, that's an issue in itself. But I believe you can make it contingent upon the fact that he does have 150 feet and or send it to ZBA to, to, to have the cul-de-sac extended and the other one straightened out. But I didn't have my say, and it, it, just from what I understand, it's, it's really a dumb issue that, that people within the town or town officials or appointed people or whatever, and I'm not talking about this board either because I think you were as blindsided as I was, but when I was told that I would have a say and I and I understand I'm up here talking, but but it's no avail because the decisions have been made already, and I think that's wrong. I almost think it's illegal. Maybe I could just clarify things, but I, I don't know who told you what, Mr. Newman. But what happened was under under Connecticut statute, if each landowner has the ability to split their property one time, what they call a free cut without coming before the Town Plan and Zoning Commission uh, for subdivision approval. And uh, we received a, uh, uh, a letter from your, your attorney who did a title search, from Peter Leschek's attorney, who did a title search stating that there had not been a cut of the property uh, since the inception of the zoning regulations. So perhaps the person that told you, and I don't know who it was or what board told you that you would have an opportunity to speak with regard to subdivision <laughs> um, possibly thought that it would require an application before the Town Plan and Zoning Commission, which, which in most cases normally occurs. However, the property owner did, did come forth with that letter uh, from his attorney stating that the property had not been subdivided since the inception of, the, of our, our zoning and, and subdivision regulations here in town. And that's why the application did not go before the Commission. If the Board of Selectmen that approved this told me that I would have a say prior to it being approved, and that's on their record. Don't you think that's either just a little bit misleading, or because I asked for a revote, not to grant the easement, and they and they did not take any action on it because I believe they thought that there would be more that could happen as time went on, and it would not be just a, an issue that was over with. I will say, uh, to, you know, to highlight also what Paula said, if the applicant was not proposing to bring in some fill and move some dirt around here, we wouldn't be having this discussion at all. He'd be building his house. You know, that's, I don't know where the errors were made uh, with the mistake. Yeah, I don't think errors. that Paul and Vinny made an error here. I think right. they just had a different interpretation than we did. Paul got an application. He questioned it. He questioned it to the proper source. He went to the town attorney and questioned it. The town attorney looked at it, looked at the regulations, gave an interpretation that happens to be different than, than we interpret it. And also, there's a, there's an issue that uh, Mr. Lesniak raised before, and you did too, Bo, that he had more than 150 feet of frontage on the town-approved road. Um, not, I'm not talking about Wheeler's Farms. He abandoned that, and you know, at that point, I'm not sure what was put on the record. And but he gave that. Did he give up that right? Did he waive the right at that time? I'd have to examine that. But it seems to me that. 
it was not, I can't believe it was the applicant's intention, I'm sure I'd listen to testimony, that uh, he gave up his right to, uh, to build uh, in an effort to, um, to assuage, you know, the town needs and, and local residents' needs. Yeah. We're saying that's a town approved road. Well, where is that on a record that it's a town approved road? I have mapped home going back to the late 1800s that were researched out of Hartford. And if anybody wants to try to figure out where Wolcott Lane is, the courts couldn't even figure it out because it went from somebody's farmhouse to something else. And, and I think you're all away. It, it, it was a nightmare. And I believe it went before the Board of Selectmen back in 1999 to abandon. Wilcott Lane as a road and then I believe part of that record was that it was already abandoned and then it, they, they were so confused they, 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 they didn't do anything it wound up going I think I believe it came to this board then it went to ZBA and um, when it went to ZBA the um, ZBA wouldn't deal with the abandonment or non abandonment no, or no I think it had to do with the building of the lot and where he would gain access to that lot. And I think the suggestion was made that he could build a road from Wheeler's Farm Road and bring it in that way. I guess my question is, Paul, um, if we close the public hearing and got the opinion of the town attorney at a later date, is that acceptable because he is a town employee? And yes. it's just a verify. An opinion on what, though? I, I, I tend to agree with what Ozzie and Paul have said, our two attorneys here, and that. The decision has been made on this lot already. Our decision, what's before us in the public hearing, is the fill. I think if you know if the debate wanted to continue on the lot, I was concerned about it before he demonstrated that he that if he put in a cul-de-sac on the approved road, he would have the appropriate frontage as approved, as we've done it in the board. That kind of satisfied my my need. Um, I, don't, I don't really see how that. Ad that adds anything to it, to be honest. Well, with I, you. like you said, because he, it's he feels better. <laughs> 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 That's not it. Feels better. I mean, it <laughs> okay. What does the board wish to do here? Right. Just a quick. Are you allowed to do some type of work like, like move a thousand yards of fill on an unapproved lot? Would you uh, no, right, no matter where you, uh, well, anytime it's, you it's have an act, anytime you have an activity on any lot where you're moving more than 400 cubic yards, it yeah. requires a special permit. That, Right, but even if it's not approved, you just come in and... Right. No, you, you still need a special permit, even if... Right, that's, do. What he, that's what Rick is saying. Right, you need a special permit, yeah. but the, the actual lot does not have to be a building lot. That's correct. Right, so in this case, it's the same thing. It doesn't matter if it's a building lot. We're just approving the 600 and so yards of movement. Correct. That's it. For all intents and purposes, he could be using it as another driveway to the existing... Right, that's what yeah. I'm saying. For, our, for the purposes that's before us tonight, so if what you're if if what you're getting to is he'll be back here at some point when he wants. Well, to I think what, what, I think what Rick is getting to is that yeah. our job was to answer right. the question here. What he asked for exactly. So if this lot's approved or not approved, this is how we came in with it. That's what well, that's what we've been saying. Right. It's all really irrelevant. Well, the but the, the notice says the site is being prepared for the construction of a single-family dwelling. So. Yeah, I, I don't know if you really want to. I, I understand. I understand your point, and I, I don't know if you really want to separate the special permit that much. And let me explain why. We've had a number of special permit applications that have been approved in conjunction with major projects, and they've been radically different than what's being proposed here. And um, we stipulate that 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 cut, fill, and excavation is to occur only in conjunction with an approved site plan or. Um, and approved special permit for a special use because you don't want that ongoing mm -hmm. earth excavation or uh, cuts to occur if the project isn't to move forward. So I, I, I think you can make, I, on that the that one hand, I think you can make a determination saying it can lie separate, but I don't so know if you want to. If that's the case, then uh, the first electman would have to say this is an approved law because they're the ones that split this road or abandon it. But do we have that in writing? It's from the first electman? They're, they're, it's at a meeting. If they're going to abandon or accept a road, it's a, a vote of the Board of Selectmen, so that there would be minutes right. to that end, which maybe we should see. Yeah. Why don't we keep the public hearing open until our next meeting? We can get... Okay, okay with you, Peter, so that we can have a town attorney here. Yeah, it, it will, it's, an extension requires we, your permission. We really have... 
I'm, I'm willing to do whatever it takes. I've been patient all day <laughs> since 1999. I guess 30 more days isn't going to hurt me. It's uh, actually, not, not actually, two weeks. It's actually two, two weeks. weeks. Yes. August 7th. Thank you very much for two weeks. We'll get all these answers, and thank you for giving us the extension. So we don't don't need a motion to to. Uh, okay. I, I'm going to be on a prearranged vacation on the seventh. Is everyone else going to be here? Just out of curiosity, or enough? We have enough people to. Yeah. Okay. Good. Yeah. Okay. So we'll. Get the the opinion, Paul. Can you search the uh, find out the, the status of the road or the board of selectmen meeting where this was? Well, I can get the minutes from the meeting, and I can try to get something an opinion from Vin or have him attend the next meeting. Okay. Uh, I'd also, uh, if it's possible, just on the abandonment issue of the road that was that was exceeding the 150 feet, I'd like to see if there was anything interesting in that uh, discussion or when that happened to see if uh, Mr. Lesniak, you know, reserved his right to consider to, to um, have the frontage um, that he was you know giving up well if uh, if we were to approve this what else does he need from this commission in order by way of our approval nothing. in order nothing. to build a house nothing okay and to be honest with you I don't know why we even waiting we're waiting yeah I, I tend to agree with the two of you, but I think to settle everybody's concerns. I mean, we can, as an academic exercise, go look at all that stuff. But it, what, what I'm hearing is that this subdivision, the subdivision of this parcel was already approved by the town. And now, in order to build a house on this property, which obviously it's his intent to do, all he needs is this approval regarding the... Uh, the, the materials fill. removal and fill, correct. She could get regardless of, as Rick said. And we have no issues on enough. that. So what are we what are we doing? The only issue is that if we approve it, we can't put that saying what you just said on an approved building lock if we don't know that. That's the only issue. At the end of the statement where it says you can remove 600 and so yards, as long as it's an approved building lot, we can't say approved building lot. We don't know that. We just well, say well, you can we know, say it. Actually, what you can what you can say is you can say that it has to that it has to occur in conjunction with an approved application for a certificate of zoning compliance to construct a single right, family. That would be fine. So we could do that. I mean, it's, I would I, I don't that. Know the next step. The next the next step. If 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 Mr. Lesjack were approved uh, for this, um, he would then apply. Uh, uh, for the construction of a single-family dwelling uh, and submit an application to my office with the signatures of the other department heads and, and could not start construction until that, that was approved. Right, you just get all the sign-offs. So. Yeah. If that's the way the Commission wants to proceed in this, then we should have a motion to close the public hearing on this matter and make a motion whether we want to approve or deny. Gentlemen, <laughs> I'm, I'm, prepared, gentlemen. I'm prepared to make that motion if I can remember everything. <laughs> um, well, first, if we're going to make a motion, we'll make a motion. To I'll, close make a the mo I'll make a motion to close the public hearing. Let's see where it goes. That's second. Any further discussion? There being none, the public hearing is closed. Now, is anybody prepared to make a motion to accept the proposal for the earth materials removal and filling, the special permit application? I'm going to make a motion that we uh, that we approve the application for temporary special use uh, special use earth materials removal and filling submitted by the property owner Peter Lesnack for the property known as 522 Wheelers Farms Road um, uh, as conditions to that approval that the nothing was it nothing will be moved that uh, work is there to be performed in conjunction with an approved application of the certificate, certificate of zoning, of zoning compliance. compliance to construct a single family dwelling. And also, I want to incorporate Scott Allen's yes. uh, letter. Memo uh, dated 6-21-2007. That, those two conditions, I'll, I'll make my motion. I, is there a time limit with respect to? You can, you can place a time limit with regard to this, uh, to this special permit, yes. That all work has to be completed within a certain amount of time. Usually, I think, um, I think we just went over Don't this. Don't you have uh, a standard set of time already? It's two years usually. Right, does, so, yeah. does this require a bond? Um, you can if you so desire, but so usually it's, something it's like this, major, yeah. you know, it's something as, as small as this. We don't usually hold a bond for that, but if you desire to do that, you could. Uh, I'll amend my motion to make the two-year requirement, but okay. I don't think there's a requirement for a bond that I see. Okay. 
We have a motion. I'll second the motion. Is there any further discussion? There being none, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Appro uh, opposed? Abstain. Abstain. Motion passes 4-0-1.